And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there for a new donation deck, Four Color Angel Command. That's right, we're taking the Command the Dread Horde with the Explore package and putting it with a bunch of angels and planeswalkers. This looks pretty sweet. We're going to be doing something a little bit different here. Uh, so the main, besides obviously Command the Dread Horde, kind of what our deck is built around is Soren Vengeful Bloodlord. As you can see, we're playing the full playset of Sorens here, where uh, not only you know does it do a little bit of damage to, to Planeswalkers, which is really nice whenever like Teferi's minus and things like that. Like there's some Planeswalkers that sit around on the battlefield at one loyalty, and Soren can pick them off. And not only can it return all of our creatures from our graveyard to our battlefield with enough loyalty, just like Command the Dread Horde does, but also the important thing here is it gives all of our creatures a lifelink. So um, all of these creatures will have lifelink, be able to gain us a lot of life, and when we have a whole lot of life, then our Command the Dread Horde is really turned on. Another good part about gaining life is anytime we gain five life in a turn, we get to make more angel tokens with Resplendent Angel. Uh, Resplendent Angel does work really well with Wild Growth Walker and Jade Light Ranger too. You just have a Resplendent Angel out <clears throat> and like a Wild Growth Walker out, for example, and then you play a Jade Light Ranger or you get back a Jade Light Ranger with your Soren. You get two triggers uh, with a Wild Growth Walker, gain six life, and then trigger the Resplendent Angel, make a five five or make another four four. Sorry, uh, after you gain five life. So that's that's all pretty sweet. So we're uh, you know we're. <laughs> We have kind of a, a crazy looking deck here. We'll see if our mana works out, um, you know, how much it does and everything. But yeah, this one looks really sweet. So let's give it a try and kick off our Monday with our first donation deck here. So we'll be playing just two donation decks today and then we're going to be playing some Omir. So it'll be a little bit of a shorter stream today. Yeah, this deck does look really fun. So you originally tried Mardu, Abzand, and Naya with this, and you're like, let's just make it four color. Cool. Hmm. Man, our, this curve is kind of high. We're on the play. We're a 25 land deck. I think I'm going to have to mulligan. I think it's just too risky. So close to keeping. This looks a lot, this looks a lot better. I don't really need that land. Yeah, this is way better. Hey, good job, Yggdrasil. Way to go. Get a diamond there. Good job. All right, walk her down. So I could have ditched the Jade Light Ranger and tried to bring it back with Soren, but I, I'm going to want to bring back Wild wow Growth Walker with Soren, I believe. This looks like this could just be like a, a blue red control deck. I'm kind of expecting ionize from our opponent. With that being said, I'm st still going to go ahead and play the Jade Light Ranger though. With thought collapse, sure. Whoa, three lands. Ugh, I needed those lands. That was unfortunate. I wanted to mill a bunch of, bunch of you know like creatures and planeswalkers and draw the lands. Okay, so let's have Soren go grab Wild Growth Walker. Hey, Sugi time. 
Uh, nope, no plans to do that in the, in the future. Just streaming. So, of course, the Soren can die uh, to a burn spell. Hey, Gunny. Didn't miss, didn't miss much. Um, we played... We played in an MCQ this weekend. Uh, didn't make day two, but did all right. We went... We started off 4-0 before losing... Them two in a row to get eliminated. Just down to two cards over here. I'm gonna see if I can uh, <clears throat> see if we can draw this land and get this command going here. Uh, no, not really, Papa Tim. I wouldn't change anything at the Grix control right away. Yeah, D Lev, I am. I, uh, yeah, I can. This will not be my final parting. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twelve, fourteen. The ringing of my sword is your death knell. I mean, just nothing for that to do right now. If we're gonna be. We're going to be exploring a lot. <laughs> what a mess I've made. <laughs> River's Rebuke. River's Rebuke. Okay. This one will take a little bit. And of course, we know they have that exclusion mage to rebounce a wild growth walker here. <laughs> I mean, I think we are still in the driver's seat. For that donation deck, D Lev. Gobari Walkers. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. All right. All right. So, um, do you want me to play that bef second before the Grixis League, or would you like me to play that? Oh, I should have I should have just ditched that and then grabbed a Soren, shouldn't I? Yeah, I probably should have just ditched that and grabbed a Soren. Let's 
too late now, though. I got a new plan. <laughs> Thanks, Denriel. I'm glad to be back. Okay. All right. Thanks, D-Love. All right. So we have Golgari Walkers. All right. So we got two five fives over there. So Soren gave our Wild Growth Walker Life Link, which meant we gained five life for the Resplendent Angel. I'm getting Shalai here to be able to start activating Shalai next turn to put counters on all my creatures. Yeah, Resplendent Angel just checks that end step. You know, so it's just an end step checking at the beginning of the end step. If you gained five life this turn, then you create a 4-4. Four, four. So our opponent just kind of has, like, some blue-red cards. Uh, Terramander. Is a card, I suppose. I could see this being, like, a Crackling Drake kind of thing. I want to have Vivian over one of these Ajani's as something that can destroy flyers. I think that's all I'm going to do, though. I don't really see anything else that I necessarily really want here. Okay, well, that's match number one. What do you know? All right, well, with Golgari Walkers... be in some more explore creature stuff i'll put that i'll do the grixis deck in the middle of the two all right looks like we're going to be really relying on a wild growth walker here soren is a good draw if we can get the lands but against mono white we're gonna need to gain this life and that's also a good one you need to draw green land i can draw Woodland Cemetery would be the land I'd like to draw. Woodland Cemetery. That was not ideal. We don't see Basic Island too much in this kind of deck. Hey, Loving Life Pal. 
At your service. Welcome back. Thanks for that resub there. Share in my light. Alright, Lyra Dawnbringer can help save us. So we did not activate Gideon first. And they forgot to do that. Oh, I didn't. Sorry, I was just doing something else. I didn't. Even, I just realized now that yeah, I was like, how do they have t two tokens? Yeah, they had. They had the other one was indestructible with the jade light. So yeah, that was that was a bad block Your of that light jade light there. Leave the darkness. Sorry, that's my bad. I'm not setting up that other deck. Um. So yeah, it's basically just Dawnbringer helps save us. Dawnbringer, of course, can get exiled by the Black Blade. But we don't... I mean, other option is play... Uh, we don't have a better option. Okay, I'm not taking lethal if Dawn, Dawnbringer gets exiled here. We're almost taking lethal. We'll be going down to one. Other option would be like playing Soren, ticking up and dealing one to Gideon and having the Branch Walker be lifelink on my turn. It's not lifelink all the time, it's just lifelink on my turn. So this we're going Drop down to one if gone. they have nothing. Ugh. This is a prime day for justice. Well, let's see what they have. Yeah, the conclave really the conclave really killed us for sure. But um yeah, the conclave really hurt. What's up like a Zoe? I believe in you. So I can play Branch Walker and Resplendent Angel. But, you know, that doesn't save us with us being at one. We can't really gain any life with Soren right, right now. Alright, so we have all these Deafening Clarions to help out this matchup. And a couple of Moment of Cravings as well. Knight of Autumns are good also. A lot of good things there. Alright, as far as taking stuff out. Um, I don't think we need all these Command the Dread Hordes. Uh, may not need it like any of them honestly command the dread hordes is the kind of card in this matchup that will like help us win games we're gonna win kind of thing like their creature removal is exile so it's not like our creatures go to the graveyards too much anyway So I think we're going to get rid of all of them, Sarkin and that Johnny. That leaves me at 61 and a whole bunch of three mana cards. Probably want to get rid of like a Domri, I guess. Something else, like another three mana card. So I, I think just a Domri.
because I want all the rest of the cards. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll be fine without command. We don't. We're not reliant on command. But that's basically every command deck. Well, I really like this hand. Um, you know, assuming we get to play some of our other spells, like we need another white source for a Splendid Angel, we need a red source for a Deafening Clarion. Yeah, Domri is good whenever you have the creatures in play. If you have creatures in play, Domri is good. But Domri on its own doesn't help you from getting run over. So we still have one. <clears throat> yep, yeah, opponent kept to one lander, looks like. So, good sign for us. Let's keep trying to hit land drops. Expecting this Wild Growth Walker to get Conclave Tribunal soon. Perfect. Definitely Clarion isn't isn't as good against a whole bunch of Dauntless Bodyguards. Hey Rex, good afternoon. They both chose Sky Marcher Aspirant? So yes, I can take it. Um, and we have Soren, yes, that can gain life back by giving our creatures life link, but that's honestly not against Mono White, getting their creatures off the battlefield is is just gonna be a better play for us. Cause like let's let's say I just take it and then I have Soren. And try to just um, you know, just then just uh, give my creatures lifelink attack back for six as well. Now that's really annoying. Then then you know, then they get to attack back and kill my Soren kind of thing. Like the creatures only have lifelink during my turn. But against mono white. Okay, so we'll just get an extra three three. Against Mono White with all of their Convoke things, um, and uh, they have just a bunch of Convoke stuff, a bunch of Ascend stuff. I just want I want their permanence off the battlefield. Now, as you can tell, I was a little bit more reliant on that Resplendent Angel, but yeah, I want to make it harder for them to Conclave Tribunal and and you know cast all their other things. So yeah, we can get a knight with we can get a three three with a knight. Um, and I think that's my play. I don't I don't think I have another play that I really want to do. Whoops. I don't really love that though. Let me get back Jade Light Ranger. You should fear the spawn of Keep exploring. I demand servitude. Hmm. I really want to find angels. 
No, this card's good. It's a good deck for a beginner without many cards. Uh, probably putting together an aggressive red deck. Uh, that's what I would recommend. Um, just a, a mono red aggressive deck. You don't need like the exact list that, um, like you know, you don't need like any exact tier one mono red list just to have like some success. You just kind of put together like the cards, the cards that you have, and uh, best you can kind of thing. Um, yeah, so for a beginner with not many cards, that, that's what I'd recommend doing. Hey, what's up, KRF? A lot of other strategies, you, you kind of need, like, specific rares and mythics to make them work really well. Thanks for that resub there, KRF. I liked it better whenever they kept one landers. <laughs> All right, Clifftop Retreat does not come into play untapped. This moment of craving this thing. Ooh, it's a cool new moment of craving animation. Just doing that before, like any, not gonna let them untap and play like a Venerate Luxodon kind of thing or you know something like that. Basically deciding if I want to shock in with the Temple Garden to give myself the opportunity to have double white next turn. Um, that would let us play Resplendent Angel next turn. Which I don't need next turn. Lava Coil is a new one too. Um... Man, Jade Light's good. But I'm thinking by, by the following turn, we're going to want to do something besides casting another Jade Light Ranger. But Jade Light is good, you know? It just kind of trades with like the creatures that they have here, plus um, explorers to find good, impactful cards for us. Like I would have drawn, I would have rather drawn that Jade Light Ranger and then, and then found the Woodland Cemetery for free off of the Explorer, for example. Well, they know about the Resplendent Angel on top, so they have to have another Baffling End if they're just willing to do this. They have to, right? Like this, this Resplendent Angel has to get Baffling Ended. Really, Joy? If War Boss isn't good anymore? I have a hard time imagining that. Yeah, not a bottom would be a good one. So I kind of regret not keeping that other Jade Light on top. Because we'd basically have a third Jade Light right now. And still have like the same draws that we that we just had. We just have an extra Jade Light in hand for how it how it worked out with the explore stuff. Well, 
This is not looking good. Not a bad draw. I walk a righteous may path. not be good enough, though. Prepare for battle. Okay. One mana short. I will have revenge for House Markov. I require your body, not your soul. One man short from like playing Shalai and activate or playing Soren and activating Shalai. You do not frighten me. All right, so yeah, we'll be able to Knight of Autumn. Knight of Autumn is perfect. Like that'll be able to destroy Conclave Tribunal, get us back our Resplendent Angel. That's perfect. And I can Knight of Autumn plus hold up activation uh, for a Splendid Angel. I do have four white sources. I believe in you, friend. So we are good there. So I think I'm actually just going to activate Shalai instead instead of holding up Resplendent Angel activation to give Resplendent Angel life link because that will let me gain five Time life. We'll be able to gain four with Shalai attack and Soren another gains day, one. Villain. So we gained five, so we get another angel here. So we got have another blocker. I think they should have taken out the Soren. I think that was their big mistake this game, was not taking out the Soren. Which they could have done by attacking with just the 2-2 the two -two token could have attacked Soren and still attacked me for 9, and I still would have had to block one of the others, and I wouldn't have been able to, to block this, the 2-2 two -two token. That was the attack they needed to make. All right, we're at 2-0. Got that updated. Uh, so it says, why do we need the, why do we need to play red is the question. Um, main deck wise, it doesn't really feel like we need red with Domri, Sarkin, and Aurelia being our red cards. I do really, really like Deafening Clarion in the sideboard. That card is awesome. I really, really like that one. The main deck, it, it doesn't really feel like these 
These cards fit too much. So I think this is a mulligan. We do have a wild growth walker and three lands, but these three are all basically dead cards. Like they're they're not gonna do anything at all. Alright, there we go. This is better. Oh, hey, it's all good, Ratsy. Thanks. Good luck. Yeah, I'll post the Momir event on YouTube. Yep, will do. So our opponent was here in chat uh, before we got paired and said that they're playing the Simic Yoink deck. Saying sorry for because you know they knew the deck that we're playing here, so that was nice of them. Um, it looks like <laughs> hand isn't so good against Simic Yoink. Uh, if they just take my Wild Growth Walker, it'll be real, real trouble. So Dadbot's asking about how ranking a mythic works. It's gone from 93 to 95 percent after winning some some matches. The um, that's good. Uh, the higher, the closer the you are to 100 percent means the closer you are to getting a, a to to being in the top 12 1200 and getting a ranking uh, a numbered ranking. So you had to you had to get up to 100 percent, and then after 100 percent. I guess I want Domri. After 100%, then you get to the 12, the ranking in numbers. Do not assume I am fragile. Land shall conquer you. Hey, what's up, Zephyrs? There'll be nothing but dust when I'm done. I keep trying to destroy as many lands as I can with that deck. Yeah, the Deafening Clarion in our sideboard could be really nice for destroying lands. Rise, my elemental friend. <laughs> yeah, this set is was so good. Oh, I just. Hey Zephyrs, I just had like a weekend off. Um, you know, my friend Dave was in town. Uh, we just hung out all weekend and everything, and just took a little, a little vacation time. Cease this aggression. Yeah, we kind of have to kill this Nissa. 
holds nature's true power. No. That's unfortunate. We were about to kill the Nyssa, and then our Lyra would have been safe. We we're almost there. Harness the elements. Unfortunately, this isn't this isn't Soren to get back Jade Light. That would have been a lot, a lot nicer. Um, it's like a minus and grab Do Branch Walker. Fear, that doesn't really help me out. I think the what I can do is get a counter on the resplendent angel so that next turn the resplendent angel i can activate it and make it a six six and so i, I can at least have my resplendent angel be bigger than the lyra i you know admittedly i don't have anything for the crisis with that but i can at least get that started All right, good. We do have the. Th All right, well, we'll attack here. Yeah, I don't don't know how we're ever gonna deal with this crisis. That's that's game. We need one more turn. The the Nissa had that one extra loyalty basically after we hit it with a Lyra and it still survived. All right, no Tristanis. If, you know, if this deck continues to be popular, which it has gotten pretty popular, maybe we need some Tristanis in here, in this sideboard. We're gonna have some Clarions and some Duresses. Um. Shalai, of course, is, is definitely good. Like it. Shall I keeps them from uh, taking everything with mass manipulation? I don't think. I guess Dispark does get rid of Nissa. I guess. Yeah, Dispark can get rid of Nissa, which could be really helpful.
one. I guess take out an Aurelia, I guess. For a Dispark. You know, two Dispark, three Clarion. Not a bad hand. Two Nissas. I kind of feel like... I kind of felt like waiting on that duress. I want these Resplendent Angels in play uh, before the Frilled Mystic. Yeah, they can attack Nyssa because they'll be they'll be in the air. And no, I'm not gonna let them get any value from their Frilled Mystic whenever we're ahead. If I had enough, if I had like enough mana to play Branch Walker and Jade Light, I would do that. I would throw a Branch Walker out there, but I don't. I could. I could have like branch walkered and held up to spark, but we'll just do this. Cool game. So they didn't have mana creatures. That's gonna make their life harder without having mana creatures. On the draw, I want all the Clarions. So we're going to go all four Clarion on the draw. All right. We'll uh, trim it to Spark in that case. I guess maybe even on the draw I want this. I guess on the, dis the draw the Dispark's even better, I suppose. So if I'm playing that, what am I cutting? That's a command. Guess that we're not gonna have like a ton of things die, I suppose. But I'm thinking like things would trade. Uh, we have like Daphne and Clarion clear up battlefields and stuff like that. I don't love this. Like this will just get run out, run out. Uh, like, like we'll get, just get wrecked by just mana creatures into Nyssa with this with this hand. I think this is a mulligan. I think this is a tough mulligan. Like something like we would keep this on a, a seven card hand, like on you know not knowing the opponent and everything. Um, kind of need Deafening Clarion on the draw here.
This hand looks just completely different from the hand we just had. <laughs> it's just like we're playing two different decks here. Yes, done. Come on, Arena. Yeah, we mulligan into a different deck. True. If I knew I had four mana next turn, for sure, I would have waited a turn and be able to double branch walker next turn. We don't, and I also didn't want them just to be able to incubation druid the, the previous turn. They still get to this next, still get to now. Good turn. No, I just, I just playing duress on turn one is just a mistake against four cards. I should have on turn three played duress. Uh, whenever I knew I had three two mana cards in hand. That's a two drop on turn. That should be a two drop into a two drop plus duress. Give them a little bit more time to draw something. I misplayed my duress. We just gotta hope that they brick for a while and don't draw any big mana thing. Because they have infinite mana. But yeah, that memorial is coming in clutch here. They did not brick. <laughs> Thankfully, Incubation Druid doesn't let them activate Respondent Angel. They don't have a white source. Thankfully. Gotta be game though, right? Now they have like Shalai that they get to activate. I wonder if I should should have taken out Shalai in this matchup. Yeah, I mean this is just over. Like sure I can play I can play this card. But we're not we're not beating Shalai with infinite mana. Can't do that. All right, so we we learned the deck needs like a Tristani, at least one, maybe two Tristanis in the sideboard, because this Simic, this Simic, just manipulation deck is is pretty popular these days. But yeah, we need we need some Tristanis in the sideboard. So that's something that we learned.
All right, two and one. All right, we can try this. Um, you know, we have Wild Growth Walker on turn two, and ideally we'll have Jade Light on three, but if not, we'll have Branch Walker. I haven't played, you know, we haven't played very many, very many matches. This is only match number four. But the red, and in, in particular the Sarkin, really feels out of place. But obviously we haven't played, haven't played that many matches with the deck yet. Yep, we got Esper Hero. I am glad they took the Sarkin and not the Ajani. Uh, but Explore Package isn't really that good against Hero of Precinct 1. Like Wild Growth Walker in particular. Uh, usually you can just chump block forever while playing stuff. uses our mana a whole lot better. I understand you're in be strong. If they do use removal, they can almost kill a Johnny, but not quite. But then them using removal here means okay, they're just which one they're gonna use. It means it's less likely that they'll have removal for Dawnbringer. So that's that's kind of my hope of like throwing the Ajani out here even though I was not strong the Ajani enough. is fragile because I don't want them to remove Dawnbringer and so at least take a you know like one removal spell out of their hand kind of thing That's the hope. So there's two reasons why you decided to play Sarkin. It's a good wall versus aggro, because all the planeswalkers, it just sometimes it gives you lethal. attack yeah yeah double hero is certainly threatening uh, we need this Dawnbringer to do all the work for us yeah main deck duress is, is certainly completely reasonable right now it's 
there's not any decks that Duress is bad against. Um, That's a good one. We don't have any removal for deputy attentions, do we? I was trying to think of like what we'd have for that, but I don't I don't think we do. But it really is perfect. Made it a two turn clock. Hmm, Domri's our removal spell. So the th throw the Ajani out to the wolves worked. Plan worked. So then the deputy on the Ajani, and then Dawnbringer wins the game. The plan worked. Hmm. All right, so they're going to be pretty removal heavy. I don't want to rely on Domri fighting with uh, decks that can have like instant speed removal, like they can. I yeah, just I just want these Clarions. Um, kind of want to cut some of the Angels. Maybe Shalai's. Maybe Aurelia. Definitely want this Ugin. Yeah, Craving would be good against, you know, Hero and Thieva Sandy, but I think I'm just going to have the, the Clarions for that. No, our, our opponent doesn't play any enchantment removal. We don't need Night of Autumn. Like, I mean, that Oath Akaya, that doesn't count. There's no Conclave Tribunals or Ixalan's Bindings or anything like that. <laughs> Thanks, Brade uh, Bradero. Thank you. Definitely hurts to mulligan four lands, three spells. That's the kind of the downside of the four color deck is sometimes you'll just have the wrong land, wrong spells kind of thing. But then also just having our six drops right away. Yeah, hype train. Yeah, I do. I do both of those. Uh, that's what we're doing today. We're pl I'm playing three donation decks here. These are all three three decks that uh, that I did not build that people donated to see um, to see played. A lot of information in the info panel. There's a donation info panel um, that describes all of those. I'm known for my excellent timing. This might be a bad idea. <clears throat> Wish we were on the play. We could soar in, kill the fairy. Right on schedule. All right, still get to. No, I am not making this up as I go. Not bad. Just 
thrive makes monsters of us all. It's only a matter of time. Be the straw. Poor Soren. Poor Soren. <laughs> Wait. Vlad, you want to play Immortal Sons in your Karnugan deck? Tilt. My command the Dread Horde. Now, uh, Soren was exiled. I don't regret playing Jade Light in the slightest. I think setting up draw steps is more important than trying to get the Jade Light, Resplendent Angel, same turn kind of thing. Um, also, with having the Command of the Dread Horde, we could uh, help set that up also with the Jade Light Ranger uh, and you know really look for our, our other black mana. You forgot you can't uptick with Immortal Sun. <laughs> yep, can't do that. Alright, so I don't think the Jade Light Resplendent Angel play would have worked. They have a good amount of things that don't trigger Hero. We've seen Duress cast down uh, Contempt now. Defy the designs of an elder dragon. Ugin battle. Secrets manifest before you. Ugin fight. All right, I want a little bit. All right, can we play this and Dawnbringer? No, I'm not going to minus three hero. I think it's actually just better for us just to keep plus twoing the Ugin, honestly, and, and getting the extra cards whenever the creatures die. I was definitely considering, minus, you know, killing the hero there. I think this is better for us in the long run, though. So Resplendent Angel is it's just 
actually more valuable than Dawnbringer. Surprising, but it's kind of true. That's a good one. Kaiserath's a, a really good sideboard card for the Esper deck. They definitely should be playing it. Uh, there's a lot of decks that are more aggressive than they are. Another my plans do not include you. No, there's Blended Angel. Change the order of those two. Put the Clifftop Retreat under the token. Together, there's more work to do. Ether itself. Sir. So I think it, knowing what that card is just gives us a little bit. Get, like having that information is kind of better before, you know, jade lighting a, a card to the top, you know, exploring a card to the top and then ticking up Ugin. I think we should tick up first, uh, give us more information on what we should do with Ugin, or sorry, what we should do with jade light after we Ugin. Uh, plus, we don't want to just like have a card that we really want and then this isn't we get rid of it kind of thing horse. impressive isn't it <laughs> rise <laughs> truth lies beyond vision hmm So three, four, five, six. So I can kill Ugin, but not Liliana. Wait, Ugin can just kill Liliana. Right. I can create. Death won't or conquer me so easily. Now they don't get to draw the cards. Right. We're good. You are capable of more than you assume. All right. Taking over. Too many. Crazy that our Ugin just minus three and has six loyalty. Don't think we've ever, like, never seen an Ugin have that much loyalty or stay around that long or any, anything like that. We begin! Thank you. 
deliver us to victory. So I could have a Johnny put counters on my planeswalkers, but I don't really want I don't really want that, I don't think. Come on. Are you ready? I shall your past is unwritten. And hero can't kill anything on its own. All right, we're three and one. Sargon did its job. Hey, Shogun Bear. It went pretty good. We started off four and zero before losing two in a row in the MCQ to get eliminated, but it was a lot of fun. And it was a good, good tournament and everything. Oh yeah, Ugin was our MVP there for sure. Ugin just did, did everything. Um, especially getting, like removing that Liliana, that, that was like the difference there. We need to do that. Oh, turn one, Lana Werelf. A start that's impossible to beat. All right, this looks like a mono green ramp deck. I have a really good fast start here. I played Grixis. Yeah. Yep, ended up playing Grixis. Wasn't really because I thought that Grixis was better than Bant. Um, I am faced worse than the choices we make reveal who we are. But I had to choose one of them. So I could play Domri and kill the Llanowar Elf. The problem with that is that Nyssa will then be attacking Domri for lethal uh, the next turn. You know, they just play a fifth land, play Nyssa plus Nyssa and attack. So I think I would, I think I want to go Branch Walker and look for a little bit more land here. And uh, be able to use Domri to, to fight uh, one of the lands that Nyssa makes. Yeah, we have a couple of basics in this four-color deck. <laughs> what was lost is now returned. Yeah, really, uh, it should pressure Nissa pretty well. They they do have the arboreal, arbor, which cannot protect itself. arboreal grazer. That the land has reach. So if I put it on Wild Growth Walker, they can double block with Bastion and Elves to kill my Wild Growth Walker. Or I can put it on Branch Walker, and they could just trade with just Elf. But trading Elf for Branch Walker is a 
Solid trade for us. I don't think we're winning this. But I'll trade Wild Growth Walker for two two mana sources. If they would like to. And this also just has so much loyalty, you know, they can just take it pretty easily. Go with the double stone rain. Well chosen. It's gonna be tough. What are we gonna do next turn? True power. I feel like Domri Branchwalker. Bleh. This is so good. Yeah, I know the Grazer has reach. I don't really want to fight the Grazer. Just, I don't want to use Domri's valuable minus ability on a chump blocker. It doesn't really sound like something I, I want to do. My I will not lose another friend. I think I'd rather fight their that forest for how the battlefield looks right now, but we'll see. Should I just get Sarkin in play? If I go Domri and then Branch Walker, I may not be able to play anything in future turns because of God Pharaoh's statue. So because of that, I think getting Sarkin in play is what I want to be doing here. Can pierce my scales. Behold, if I don't attack. Karn, then Karn gets a spyglass to name Sarkin. Okay. So no spyglass. Your opponent's playing Mono Green Tron. I like this Mono Green Tron deck. It's pretty cool. Um, I like it. I'll make use of that laser. Oh, that's true. I didn't really consider Karn's Bastion Ult Nissa. 
But is that even that bad? That's not really that bad for us, though. That would get Nyssa out of there. I'm sure they would get a whole bunch of forests, but they would only have one forest that would be a 3-3. Three, three. So that's, that's not even bad for us. Um, is Aurelia worth crafting? I guess it depends on depends on your deck and everything. Um, maybe not. Like, Aurelia is going to be leaving Standard in like four months. It isn't super powerful. Oh, well, you already knew the answer to your question, then. You have a lot of decks and you don't value her? Then, yeah, then you don't need to. Oh, is she not? She's not rotating? Oh, right. She's Gilda Ravnica. Right, my, my fault. My fault. All the other angels are. Shalai, Lyra, and... Sorry, my bad. She's not rotating in, in four months. All the other angels are. Another Karn. Stand down. That Fielder Ruin play was really nice. Just have the two basics. And, you know, we drew drew both of our basics. So we can't play Domri anymore. Otherwise, we would normally just Domri fight the Grazer here. Can't do that, though. They are coming! So we have to make sure that we're killing Nyssa, of course, this turn. Uh, no wind cat, I do not. Hey, what's up, Night Owl? Happy Monday. I, I was honestly expecting our opponent to chump lock the branch walker there and keep their carn alive. I'm surprised they didn't. Yeah, another Nyssa. Magnificent world. All right, so we can still meteor golem. So what are they meteor golem goleming the away? The Aurelia, the Sarkin. This will aid us. What's the? Oh, they're gonna grab Ugin. It's a good card too. Uh, question is, what is the best standard deck? Probably mono red. Yeah, I'd have if I had to choose one, I'd choose mono red. It has everything. It's really fast, has tons and tons of card advantage. It's very resilient. It's kind of silly to say anything else. Golem. No, really a down. 
I don't play other formats anymore. I have previously, of course, Listen but I don't. I don't uh, anymore. Just just standard on arena. If and when other formats come to arena, I'll likely play them as well. Let's just fight. Hmm. Unfortunate wasting this fight on the Grazer. I summon you. I also think it's just the thing to do. So we can kill Nissa. Killing Nissa is just too important. So if they Ugin minus, like, you know, they, they can clear up my Planeswalkers pretty easily this turn, um, whether they do, whether or not they Ugin minus. If they do Ugin minus, then we can have Sorin tick up and kill the Ugin. How convenient. An excellent choice. So you, you play against Mono Red one out of five games, that's that's a ton. That's twenty percent. A deck being twenty percent of the metagame is is a is a lot. No, if if we weren't attacking like if we weren't attacking their planeswalkers, especially like the Karns, like if I was just attacking them, Karns Carnes would have just grabbed Spyglass that would have shut down the Planeswalker, like would have shut down Sarkin. Um, no, our, our opponent would not have been dead. And then the Nissas could kill us pretty quickly too. No, we, I don't, I don't think attacking our opponent would have been a, a winning prop proposition in this game. Come kill that land war off. Come on. A dragon would rather die than lose. So I have seven mana. Can still only single spell, of course. Uh Can only punish you if they catch you. <laughs> I did not stop this fight, but I will finish it. I want to get Karn out of there. Keep that card advantage engine, you or get rid of that card advantage engine. Especially with them having an Ugin exiled under the Karn right now, where they can go grab another Ugin. There are great Just get Karn out of here. So we'll have Soren grab Aurelia to get that extra two there. My presence alone will guide you. Hmm. It's kind of odd. They didn't kill my blocker. 
Oh, really? Actually, there's a. I'll be back I guess they attack for the same with, with that. You'll see. Yeah, they attack for the same. We're actually in a really good spot right now. Didn't think I would say that at all for how the game was going earlier. thought we were certainly dead, but we just kind of willed away all those walkers, and we're still there. Yeah, we're still alive. Are you certain of your decision? Oh, maybe I should give him sword tooth. All right, so normally I'd be activating Resplendent Angel here, but with that Ugin being able to destroy, I don't want the Ugin to res destroy a Resplendent Angel, so I'm gonna play the Shalai to protect Angel. I am proud to have bought. Need to have Shall I protect Resplendent? Seek shelter Bleh. in my stewardship. That's annoying because I can't kill Nissa and Ugin next turn. I can only kill one. I'm killing Nissa. Means I'll have. He'll be able to take up Ugin next turn. That's fine. The Ugin take up's not going to do a whole lot. Oh no, we can kill both. Never mind. Never mind. We can kill both. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, because that's six. I, I forgot about the mentor trigger when I was talking. Sorry about that. And still keeping Aurelia back on defense instead of Resplendent Angel. You know, I could just put the trigger on the Resplendent Angel and gain two more life and have the Resplendent Angel on defense. But I like Aurelia on defense because most people want to try to clear out defenders. Like, like, if they're going to use removal on Resplendent Angel anyway, I, I would still want to have, like, the best defense I can. Alright, well, we definitely want all these to Sparks. Knight of Autumn's probably not so bad. Our Ugin... Basically kills their Nyssa. I mean, Clarion's definitely good here, too. This is just too many cards. Do I just cut Explore Package? I mean, that's coming out. These are coming out. But as we saw, like, that last game, the Sarkin, Sarkin flying over and killing stuff was, was certainly good. Maybe I don't need Night of Autumn. No, I should play Night of Autumn. Maybe I don't need to. Hey, what's up, Silverwing? Good. Our main artifact's probably gonna be like Spyglass.
Yeah, I know Vivian can destroy artifacts and stuff too, but don't think that's super necessary. Getting rid of one each of Wild Growth Walker and Branch Walker, because I don't think our life total is going to really be under that much duress. Where we don't really need the life gain a ton, and with us having the Clarions and everything too. Oh no, I like Soren. But I could see taking I could see taking out one Soren though. No, I kind of feel like just getting this white source in here. I don't think that two <coughs> I will my life will be I will rid you of your real, real important. Transmogrifying Wand. Ugh. I'd love to keep that. Don't have the lands. Really need next turn to be able to branch walker and to spark probably. I'm I'm not disparking Karn as you can tell. I'm saving Dispark for other Karn or Nissa or Ugin. Like one of those cards. This card only grabs artifacts and we have Knight of Autumns. I will not stop. To spark the sloth? I don't think the sloth costs four or greater. Yeah, I think that only costs one. God Pharaoh statue. Does mean my Knight of Autumns would cost five mana. I guess that could be a problem. Land. All right, good. We're getting there. Need another land to be able to Knight of Autumn the statue. Hey, Bernie. Happy Memorial Day. Some solutions must be built. Yeah, we can dispark the statue, but I want to save dispark for Nissa and Ugin. Since we have the Knight of Autumn, they can kill the statue. I want to get a lot better value out of the dispark getting a good Planeswalker. I'm like, if we don't draw the land here, I'm just playing Branch Walker. I'm not going to use that to spark in that scenario, but 
we uh, drew the land for Night of Autumn. I was hoping our opponent was going to attack with the Sword Tooth so we could attack back at the Karn. They did not. Hey, Budacris. Happy Memorial Day. Alright, they went and grabbed another statue. And love the attack. So we can draw land. Alright, drew our land. Go Soren. Get back Knight of Autumn. I have come for vengeance and blood. Embrace the bloodlust. Love that statue. My grief fuels my mission. Hmm. Spyglass. That's unfortunate. Basic? Why did it have me say the word basic? That was odd. So of course with drawing the Dawnbringer here, I'm gonna just be, you know, before I was planning on branch walkering, but now I'll just be dropping this Dawnbringer. I guess I do get to use Karn to go grab Meteor Golem to kill Dawnbringer. Hey, what's up, Prugor? Hey, Yud. Yeah, had a good time with the qualifier there. Started off strong with it too, but didn't end up, you know, won our first four in a row, but then lost our last couple there. There's the golem. The life link with Clarion could turn on Resplendent Angel. Potentially. I don't think that's really worth like the card though. No, no regrets with the Grixis deck I chose. Nope, not at all. Oh. 
Say hello to my little friend. But yeah, you're you're right. Yeah, the the Soren already turns on the responding angel, so didn't need that at all. All right, we are four and one. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't considering the the Soren over there doing that. All right, final boss time. Our opponent played four artifacts that game. Uh, the, yeah. This deck is colorful. <laughs> Well, if you play Dreadhorde, three color, but with four discoveries, and you discard your boluses, etc., so you can never have to cast them, but you could return them. So, well, if it works out perfectly that the bolus is specifically where your discovery is, like, you know, that could work out, but... That doesn't seem too reliable. I wouldn't recommend putting cards in your deck that are completely uncastable. Yep, main deck duress seems to be all the rage these days. Understandably so. Um, I think Tristani, to where to include Tristani in here, I think it's better than the Vivian in the sideboard. Um, could be better than one of these Ajani's in the main deck also. If you want it in the main deck. If you want the sideboard, it'd be over Vivian. You think I'm crazy? They can only punish you if they catch you. <laughs> So this is a control deck. I want Domri in play first to keep our creatures from being able to be countered. Also speeds up our mana. If it's a, a hero, precinct one, or thief of sanity deck, it means they don't get to just jam there. Uh, either thief or hero, whichever one there. <laughs> I've had it, boys. Yeah, that makes sense. The the three most uh, dominant decks being red, four color command, and Esper Hero. Yep, that that sounds about right to me. Bringing your comeuppings. All right, so we do have Esper Hero here. Uh, <laughs> Esper Hero is not a trash deck. There's, it's just filled with really good rares and mythics everywhere. It's, I know my responsibility. We need to move quickly. Not, yeah, it's it's a really strong deck. Hmm. 
We were going to be able to have our 4 3 resplendent attack Teferi and then have the Soren finish off Teferi there if they didn't have a counter spell. So we played against Esper Hero earlier also. That Domri was just a really good draw for us, like that game. It, it fit perfectly. Like right after that duress, we drew Domri, got to play it, uh, made their counter spells not do anything, it was a removal spell. For the Thief of Sanity. It was just it was just like perfectly placed. So I don't know exactly what I want to do here. Basically everything in our sideboard, duress, moment of craving, dispark, deafening clarion. They're all I mean, Ugin, they're all certainly reasonable. I remember last time I brought in a couple Clarions and an Ugin. And brought in Duress also. And just went... I want to take out a Wild Growth Walker, honestly. They don't really pressure our life total too much. And Wild Growth Walker doesn't get through very well. These Sarkins back in here. Get those things out. The Spark is great for Big Teferi. They don't have a lot of other real good targets for Despark in this deck. It's a lot of cheaper cards. Like, they may have a Sorin. Um, they may have a six mana walker with, like, a Liliana or an Ugin. But it is Despark is great for Teferi, though. All right, <clears throat> really hoping no discard. The biggest problem with our hand, or like what we have right now, is that uh, one command the Dread Horde's in our hand, another one's at the bottom of our library. They're, they're our best late game card. And if it just gets... But we couldn't keep the other one on top. And so if this just gets discarded away, which is really, really likely, uh, we're going to be... <clears throat> finding trouble to turn around in the late game. I think the mono green Tron deck is better in best of one, but I think it's just fine in best of three also. I think it's okay there. Bites coming in. There's a there's a switch over in the top right hand corner, kind of or like not really the corner, but around the area of the screen on the main on the main screen, like where my where I have my cursor right now. There's a symbol that's a switch that you need to toggle to get to best of three. Um, so. It doesn't look like a, a switch, but it is. And that's how you get to best three. Well, we got another one.
I guess we don't need to play into a Dovin's Veto. Just playing a Dawnbringer here. And then, yeah, thank you, Dark Space. Yeah, in, in the menu, it's called Traditional. Um, the best of three is called Traditional in the menu. So they're going to have to <clears throat> deal with this Dawnbringer. Whenever they do, we'll be able to resolve Soren. It's certainly possible they just had another Dovin's Veto previously. I believe they have a Tyrant Scorn. That's unfortunate. For how it stopped on their turn for a while, I kind of feel like they have another Tyrant Scorn. Definitely unfortunate. Now I wish we would draw the Command the Dread Horde that we put down to the bottom of the library. But that's not going to happen. Hmm. Well, not looking good. We know their hand's all gas. So I wasn't planning on playing a Deafening Clarion yet. But since we have a Jade Light Ranger, I guess I should probably Clarion first and then Jade Light. If we would have just drawn another, like another land, I would have just, you know, played my land and passed kind of thing. Save a Clarion to be a little more um, impactful. All right, good night, Dark Space. So they did have that other Tyrant Scorn that I thought. I can no longer stand by and watch. That's more like it. Probably gets vetoed. Ooh, no veto. Do you? Interesting. Hmm. I will call the dragons. So obviously, minusing Sarkin just doesn't make any sense with the Teferi there. No pain. 
So yeah, I think I think our opponent didn't. Yeah, they didn't get rid of the Sarkin because they were, they had the Sarkin covered. Whether if we minused, they would have bounced the token and then killed it with Oath of Kaya. If no. we plus, they do this. They loop Oath of Kaya. So good play. Yeah, unfortunately, I only have one command in the deck because we had one in the opener that got discarded in my three land hand. I, after we mulliganed, I scryed one to the bottom. Secrets manifest before you. So unfortunately, I don't have like more commands. Trust me, I have a plan. But yeah, whenever we keep a three land hand after mulliganing, scry a spell to the bottom. The multiverse obeys me. And then draw eight lands. That's not ideal. And we finally drew a Soren, but now they're going to Thought Erasure us. At least that's what it looks like they're trying to do. Hmm. Or not. Basically, just kind of trying to set up and look for a command. And hope it resolve kind of thing. So, yeah, the Soren's going to die. But, um, just, you know, kind of hoping that we can have one resolve. And no, no, it wasn't going to clarion on away their things to give them two cards to try to protect Soren like that. Wasn't gonna give them two extra cards. <laughs> yeah, we're a four color deck. Of course of course our mana's rough. Yeah, you can could kill Soren anyway. Yep. Oh, I can wait millennia for revenge. Ether itself. Let's try this. Opponent's having us sit there for a while after we draw. Before deciding to do something or not. <clears throat> See our Definitely our best top deck is Command the Dread Horde, of course. And getting it to resolve through discard and counter magic is really ambitious. But that's our that's our best draw. This my plans do not include. Here we go.
guess we have to let them draw three. Ugin real strong. Okay, well they got a full hand. We got nothing. Their graveyard has a hero precinct one. Truth lies then all answers. Vision. Don't worry, I got this. And we have a lot of threats that were killed. I can no long hold that thought. Nice, you got a Mythic Wild Card, a Chandra, a Soren, and a Niv Mizzet Reborn. Now, those are some good packs there. Stop on upkeep, draw. Wait for the stream to catch up. And we can keep it. I thought I put you in, Ugin. I guess I accidentally took Ugin out. Okay, let's try again. So let me keep these Clarions in. Uh, but gonna try a couple of the Sparks for the more expensive Planeswalkers. All right, we get to be on the play. Um, hope to get one of our Planeswalkers in play and uh, untap with it for a little while, like we had the first game. Didn't get to do that through the Dovin's Vetoes and everything the second game, the discard and the Vetoes. Ah, uh, this is Final Boss. Yeah, I forgot to put on the Final Boss music. I'm a little rusty. All right, here we go. No, you should not put Arch of Orozco in this deck. You have four colors in here. Don't don't put a colorless land in your deck. So we're gonna be shocking on turn two. Uh, like no matter what, like to be able to get Branch Walker on turn two, we got a shock. That's that's standard. It's really hard to come back whenever you're behind like that. That's standard. Which is, is really magic in general. It's okay. All right, Hero Precinct 1 on turn 2. That's going to be difficult for us. Yeah, 
Can you draw spells? So Mortify would take out both of my creatures. Okay, good, not Mortify. But having the Branch Walker dead isn't really the worst thing for us when we have Sorens. Some spells. Taste my blade. I abhor my need for blood. Need to draw spells. I'm trying. I'm trying to stop drawing land. Not doing a very good job, though. I won't hide from the. Keep up the pace. We all make sacrifices. Uh, that was previously. That was just the final, Final Fantasy VII boss theme. For plan B. Vampirism is a useful trait. Well, we drew an Aurelia. It's all it's the only spell we drew in the six in our first six turns. Drew an Aurelia. And they had a contempt. You know what? I'm Wasn't not good done enough. yet. Provoke me. Blah. Attack. Why would they rather bounce this than destroy it? If we destroy, I have to minus two my Soren to get it back. That play doesn't make any sense to me. But now we get to plus two Soren to just recast it. Don't I don't understand why that would be bounce instead of destroy. Do you want me to phase you out of time? <laughs> what a mess I've made. I can't I can't think of any reason to bounce instead of destroy. And then just use a Mortify on, like, the same Branch Walker after it lets me draw a land. I don't know. 
Hey, Jonas. Thank you so much for that to resub there. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Well, Soren reviving it would cost Soren two loyalty instead of Soren being able to add two loyalty. Like, Soren would be at two right now instead of six, and their Teferi would be at five instead of four. And then Soren at 2 loyalty would be dying currently. It doesn't really matter. Our opponent has Teferi in play and is drawing 2 cards a turn. And we just have all these lands. So it's not going to matter. We're not winning this. I have survived worse than you. Basically, I like. I don't, I don't even know what we're, how we're gonna, how we could win this. I mean, if they have like just as many lands as we do. Maybe they just draw like lands and discard spells and nothing else for a while. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was a real bad land pocket there. So, so far, so we've seen 18 cards. We kept four lands. You need to slow down. And three things. Branchwalker, Soren, Soren. Right? And so we've drawn, wait, so do we draw, we drew an extra Branchwalker. And an Aurelia, is that right? I don't know. Jeremiah, I don't think you're doing your math right. It's certainly a lot higher chance than that. Sorry, I'm late. Yeah, you're you're no not doing your math right. We've seen it. Uh, I guess we've seen 17 cards. But oh, because that one was talked. So yeah, we had seen 18 cards. We had drawn. Yeah, we'd seen 18 cards and drawn 13 lands. But you're you're not doing your math right. Well, I should have just played another land. I was just going to put this in tapped, but now I realize that we could have the six mana to activate Resplendent Angel, which that's probably not going to be necessary, but who knows? I should have just played one of the other lands. I don't know what the sound glitch is, so I don't... I guess not. I, I haven't... So, some people have been saying that there's a sound glitch thing, but I haven't seen anything with that. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not a 0.0007% chance that it's 13 lands and 17. Like, how even how you had a 13 lands and 17 cards. It's much, much, much higher than that. Reverse! It's certainly over 1%. Easily.
We're gonna have a random draw, then a branch walker, then a resplendent angel. Who knows, if our opponent has no interaction, no removal or anything, like how they were minusing their Teferi, which is a good sign, maybe this Let's Resplendent Angel can take over. Point. Yeah, I could do that, Gabrielle. And this is why we shocked before. Should it, should it not shocked, of course. Just played something else, but what? Please do this attack. Dang. That attack we would have been able to block with the resplendent angel, gain five life, get an get another angel. again. Wow. I did not think that we were that we were do that we were gonna win this. Did not think we were gonna win that. And we get a pack too. Did not think we were winning that at all. But we'll take it. Resplendent Angel. Our opponent flooded out just as much as we did. Um yeah, like they just had to flood out really bad too. And Resplendent Angel just got there. I think our opponent was a little overzealous on the minusing. Like I don't think they should have minused on the, the branch walker, just keep drawing cards. But they could have been a couple more cards deep. Alright, let's crack crack uh no pack for no getting the five wins. Hey, we got a Domery. That's a great pack. Even good at uncommons too. The Rampage, Domery, the Celebrant. Charm Stray. Good old pack here. Yeah, that was a good pack. <laughs> Alright, so four color angel command with the five wins here. Um, we cast command the dread horde one time, and it obviously won the game whenever we did. So that's kind of that's uh, showing the strength of the deck that we went five one with the deck and we basically never used command the dread horde except for like the very first match in a game that we were going to be able to win without command the dread horde. It was like we were going to be fine, but then we just cast the command the dread horde that just took over. Soren was awesome and particularly strong with the angels. Like Soren Resplendent Angel was really impressive. Just Wow Growth Walker with Resplendent Angel with that life gain and Soren. Like that all together was just a really impressive combination uh, for sure. And then, of course, like our other angels like Shalai and Lyra were really good. Uh, Domri did a little bit, a couple of good things for us. Uh, Johnny was fine. It was okay. Didn't do a whole lot. Um, but Aurelia kind of uh, helped us out with that plus two a couple of times. Sarkin helped us a couple of times. Still, overall, I think I would just prefer Abzan with this deck. I don't think that the red is really that necessary. Um, it seems like... It just really doesn't seem like we really need Domri, Aurelia, or Sarkin to to have like a you know like this tougher mana base that gave us troubles at times. Let me just go back to the other playlist. There we go. Um, <clears throat> just kind of seems like we could just be like an Abzan command deck. That would mean that we'd have less Planeswalkers and everything. Um, but 
Angels, Explore Package, Soren, Command, and then you could play like Vivian's. Then also, that is a really good. Um, that's just a good a good recipe. I like that. I like that kind of deck. Um, you have red for mostly for Clarion. Yeah, and Clarion was awesome. Clarion really was was awesome. But you could also have Cry the Carnarium if you if we're just going three color. You could have Cry the Carnarium. I know you said that you you um, uh, that uh, um, sorry. I know. Sorry, I was looking at something else. I know you're saying that you were struggling against like mono red and mono white, and being three color would really help that because that would just clear out. Like you wouldn't get, um, like you wouldn't get uh, color screwed nearly as much. You wouldn't have as many like shocks and uh, shocks and tap lands. You could have more basics, and Abzan certainly has the colors to help out in those. Those like you know you can have Tristani and and so on. You can have Cry the Carnarium. And be just fine there. Um, and instead, instead of like you, de you definitely want planeswalkers, especially with command. You definitely want a good amount of planeswalkers. But instead of having Sarkin and Domri, you could just have Little Vivian and Big Vivian, and I think that that would work out just fine. Having Little Vivian, Big Vivian. I think you want some more just removal in the deck, just in general, like. I guess Dom, you know, Domri's our only removal in the main deck, but we could have, like, if you're three, especially if you're three color, it'd be a lot easier to be more, you know, have some more black, and you could have Ravenous Chupacabra, um, that can get back with Command the Dread Horde, um, but then, of course, we have the Knight of Autumn, but then uh, just cast down in the sideboard could help. Those match like aggro matchups, just having cast down and. Um, Cry the Carnarium. Really liked Ugin. Ugin was awesome. Yeah, you could have you could have Little Vraska too. Yeah, Little Vraska's good. Yeah, Little Vraska's good. Um, that's true. That's a good card. Uh, I was wondering if we're gonna miss like not having any kind of like mana creatures, but we didn't really seem to. It seemed like Branch Walker and Wild Growth Walker were enough two drops. I was thinking that we were gonna want more two drops overall, but they did a good job. And we didn't we weren't really like real far behind all the time. And even if we were a little bit behind, Resplendent Angel, Shalai, and Lyra do a good job of stabilizing. Um And Donahoe has an Abzan deck, same kind of idea. Just put it in the chat. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that's that's a good... Yeah, that looks pretty good. I like Elder Spell. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. But Soren was really good. Soren definitely felt like a, a four of in this kind of deck. The Soren is really strong. Maybe I'll have to experiment with this this kind of shell also in the Abzan Angels in the future. It played it played pretty well. The Angels did really good. The Soren was good. I liked it. Alright, so that's Four Color Angel Command. So if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, that's it here. So pl uh, please hit the like and subscribe button over there on YouTube as well. I'd be appreciative of that. Yeah, uh, yet again, thank you so much.